Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Bay Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall Family Druggist. Good evening. This is your Rexall Family Druggist. Taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign in our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin. And they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Walter Scharf and his music, and starring Alice May and Phil Harris. <laughs> Phil and Alice have just finished the weekly rehearsal of their radio show, and we find them leaving the studio at NBC. Hey, Alice, looks like we got a swell show for next week, huh? Yes, everything sounded great, Phil, except your song. Do you think you ought to do that type of number? Well, why not? There ain't nothing wrong with my rendition of trees. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I can't go on just singing it. Hey, hey, Alice, look. Look at that guy coming toward us. He looks familiar. Where? Oh, oh, that's Mr. Scott, one of the Rexall executives. Mr. Scott? Mm -hmm. Scott? You mean the guy Frankie and me almost blew up with that chemistry set a few weeks ago? The same. Gee whiz, I never met that guy. You know something, honey? I've been trying to reach him and tell him that I'm sorry, but, but I don't know. He's, he's never in when I call. Well, here's your chance to meet him and apologize. Okay, honey, now look. When he gets up here, introduce him to me and give me a big build-up. Send right. me out. Now. Okay, I will. Hello, Mr. Scott. Oh, how do you do, Miss Faye? My, you look charming today. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Scott, may I present... I meant to call you and tell you how much I enjoyed you on the program last Sunday, Miss Faye. Oh, thank you. And now may I pre... Did you really like me? <laughs> I, uh... <coughs> oh, I... yes, yes, indeed. I thought your song was out of this world. Oh, it's nice of you to say that, Mr. Scott. I, uh... <coughs> <coughs> I always like to know that you're happy with what I'm doing. <coughs> <laughs> Rexall makes a cough medicine that could help you. <laughs> As I was saying, Miss Faye, we feel very fortunate in having a star who is both talented and beautiful. I knew he'd get around to me. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Scott, I'd like to present my husband, Phil Harris. How do you do, Mr. Scott? I've waited a long time to meet you. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Quite an occasion, uh, isn't it, Mr. Scott? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Scott, I hope you're not mad about what happened uh, with the chemistry set. You know, I didn't mean to almost blow you up with it. I was only just pulling a practical joke around the house. I keep Alice laughing all the time, don't I, honey? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Scott, you still seem a little bit upset I'll do anything to make it up to you I'll tell you what, uh, uh Hey, why don't you come out the house sometime And I'll let you blow me up <laughs> Sure, any time at all Will you be home this afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> now, if you will excuse me, I have to run along Mrs. Scott and I are attending an important dinner this evening we're having trouble finding someone to sit with our baby daughter. Uh, do you happen to know of a babysitter, Miss Faye? Well, around the holiday season, they're rather difficult to get. Nonsense, honey. What are you talking about, difficult? Mr. Scott wants a babysitter. We'll get one for him. Won't be any trouble at all, Scotty. Can I, uh... <laughs> 
Can I count on that? You can bet your wife on it. Don't worry about it. I guarantee to have a babysitter at your house this evening. Oh, thank you, Mr. Harris. Here's my address. Have the sitter at my house by 7. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Scott. Hey, honey. <laughs> Guess I fixed everything up with Scotty, huh? All I got to do is get him a babysitter, and I'm in solid. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do, huh? Do you realize it's almost impossible to get a sitter at the last moment? Nothing's impossible for a Harris. Are you kidding? <laughs> Look, let's go home, and I'll call up the sitters we know. I'll get him one. I'll have him. <laughs> hey, honey, looks like we're in trouble. I've been on the phone for an hour. I've called every babysitter we know, but they're all busy. Well, have you tried Gloria Randolph? Gloria? Uh-huh. Hey, Gloria. I forgot about her. Sure, I'll call her, and if she can't come, maybe your husband can. Oh, I'll get the door. All right. And uh, you'll find Gloria's number in the book, Phil. Okay, honey. Oh, hello, Frankie. Hiya, Curly. Oh, Alice. <laughs> Where's Curly? He's inside. Go on in. I have to get lunch ready. Oh, thanks. I'll have a toasted cheese sandwich, two hard-boiled eggs, a cup of coffee. <laughs> I suggest our 35 cent blue plate, sir. You get dessert with that, sir. <laughs> Anything you say, Alice. I'm going to see Curly. Hi, Curly. Oh, hello, Frankie. Hey, excuse me, I'm trying to get a girl for tonight. Okay. <laughs> trying to get a girl? Hello? Oh, hello, Gloria. Yeah, this is Phil Harris. Hey, tell me, Gloria, are you doing anything tonight? I better shut the door so Alice can't hear this. <laughs> Oh, you're busy tonight, huh, Gloria? Ah, oh, look, honey. Couldn't you make it for little old curly-headed me? Please, honey, with sugar on it, please. At his age, too. <laughs> oh, well, if he's gone haywire, I'll get my hat and go with him. <laughs> hey, Curly, ask her if she's got a girlfriend for me. Frankie, please, will you keep quiet? <laughs> girlfriend? Hey. I think that's an idea. Yeah. Hey, Gloria, have you got a girlfriend that can make it tonight? Oh, they're all busy, huh? Well, can your husband come over? Wait a minute. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you can't make it, Gloria. I'll call you some other time. Goodbye. Oh, uh, look, I'm sorry I was busy, Frankie. I was trying to get a babysitter. You cat! How could you... Babysitter? <laughs> Certainly. I'm trying to get somebody to stay with Mr. Scott's baby. Scott? Name sounds familiar. It should sound familiar, kid. It should sound very familiar. Why? Well, don't you remember? He was the guy that was coming into the garage with Willie the day our chemistry set exploded. <laughs> oh, is he still alive? <laughs> <laughs> is Gloria making... Nah, she's busy too, honey. Every girl I called is busy, and I know that... Hey, Remley. What's the matter? Hey, you know a lot of girls. You know one who would be willing to sit with a baby? Yeah, I might. Now, yeah, let's see. There's... Now, remember, Frankie... She has to be refined. <laughs> Alice, please, that's the only type I associate with. Now, let's see. I could get you Babe Zimmerman. No, she'll be too tired at the end of a day. Those sand hogs work pretty hard. <laughs> hey, maybe I could get you Selma, the masked wonder. The masked wonder? Well, that's just the name she wrestles under. <laughs> Nah, she might be a little too rough with the kid. Hey, wait, I got just the girl. Bertha the Beaver. <laughs> you think the Beave could beat Mr. Scott's house by 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock? No, she'll never make it. By the time she gets home and showers and shaves... <laughs> she shaves? Shaves? Yeah, she's the bearded lady in a sideshow. Oh. <laughs> Here's a guy with a sand hog, a wrestler, and a bearded lady. Hey, Remley, you don't have any two-headed dames on your list, do you? Just one, but she ain't... Never mind. <laughs> Did you be serious? Can't you see? This is important to both of us. And it's my chance to get in good with Mr. Scott. I don't happen to know any babysitter. Well, I gotta get somebody to sit with his baby girl. Well, you'd better get somebody dependable. Somebody with intelligence who knows how to handle a baby. How much do you have to know to sit with a baby? Anybody with a half a brain can do it. Good morning, Philip. <laughs> well, it's a... 
if it ain't old half brain himself. <laughs> hey, Willie. Look, Willie, how would you like to spend this evening with a cute little babe? Oh, I'm sorry, Philip. I have to go back to the Rexall office and do... Babe? <laughs> you mean you have a date for me? Well, since you put it that way, uh, yeah. Well, that's different. <laughs> Uh, what does this um, babe look like? Ah, she's a cute little honey. She's got curly blonde hair. How's the figure? And big blue eyes. How is her figure? And a cute little turned up nose. Never that mind the decorations. How's the tree? <laughs> you surprise me. Hey, sounds like this boy's been around. Hey, Curly, you think he necks? Remley like a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when it comes to neck and Willie's at his seconds You mean moments Short-winded <laughs> Now, Philip, uh, where do you think my date uh, will want me to take her? Look, Willie, that's just the beauty of it You won't have to take her any place She just wants you to sit at home with her Just oh. the two of you All alone Just the two of us all alone? Kind of frightening, isn't it, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I I'm just wondering how to entertain her I know. I'll take my cribbage board along. Yes, yes, by all means, Willie. And if that fails to get her in a sociable mood, you can always whip her up a batch of boysenberry muffins. <laughs> well, I'd better run, run along and get dressed for the occasion. Oh, uh, by the way, what will my date be wearing? Oh, one of those off-the-hip triangles. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, the boys are ribbing you. Your date is a baby, and they want you to sit with her. A baby? Well. <laughs> that certainly is a nasty trick to play on me, Philip. You can do your own babysitting. Goodbye. <laughs> He's just a bag of nerves, isn't he? <laughs> Hey, Alice, why did you have to tell him all about it and spoil it? Now who am I going to get? Hey, how about Julius? The kid will jump at a chance to make a few bucks. Oh, no, no, Julius can't do it. During the holiday season, he's working nights delivering orders. Of course, one of us could do it. Yeah, but which one? After all, it wouldn't look right for the star of the Rexall program to be a babysitter. That lets me out. <laughs> why can't you do it, Phil? Hmm. Well, I have to stay home with the star's children. That only leaves one person. Doesn't it, um... Frankie? You can't imagine whom you're referring to. <laughs> then I'll tell you. You. You who? <laughs> you Herbert? No, you. Remley. You, Remley? <laughs> I never met the man. I wonder if we're related. Will you cut it out, Remley? <laughs> Wait just a minute. I don't care. You're going to sit with Mr. Scott's baby, or I'll tell him it was your concoction that almost blew him up. You mean you'd squeal on me, pal? With no compunction. <laughs> and I use the word loosely. <laughs> now, look, Frankie, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll help, though. As soon as the Scots leave, then I'll come over and sit with you. Well, all right, but you better be there right after the Scots leave, or I'll... I'll... I'll refuse to write your letter to Santa Claus this year. <laughs> you better get going, Frankie. Phil will join you later. I want him to hear the tune I'm singing next week. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Among the sheltering palms, a honey, wait for me, a honey, wait for me. Don't be forgetting we've got a babe out where the sun goes down about eight. How my love is burning, burning, burning. How my heart is yearning, yearning, yearning to be down. Among the sheltering palms, a honey, wait for me. Among the sheltering palms, oh honey, why do we go where trees are shady? Watching the lovely hula ladies, we've got a little date we should keep. Out where the moon is never asleep, while my love is waiting, 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 why should you be always hesitating to be down? Among the sheltering palms, oh honey, wait for me. 
sell the ring palms to tell me how would you like to be my honey hot with stars are nice and sunny we'll know what pretty moonlight is for we'll see the ocean kiss from the shore i'll be glad for all the love we started if you're not then i'll be broken hearted to be down way down among the sheltering palms oh honey way kid's been crying for an hour now. I wonder where Curly is. Now, cut it out, will you, baby? Oh, please, little honey. Don't cry. Please don't cry. Ah, shut up! <laughs> I gotta be firm with these things. They're all alike. You just have to show them. Oh, that must be Curly. Come in! Well, here I am, Mr. Belvedere. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> Sorry, you see. It's all I get is excuses. I'm always at home with the baby while you're out gallivanting with the boys at the pool. <laughs> but Alice, I wasn't at the pool. Oh, shut up! <laughs> hey, Remley. Uh, what? Hey, the Scots were satisfied with his uh, babysitter, huh? Pool. Doing all right. Yeah. I told him I was a college boy majoring in child psychology. <laughs> I told him I always sit with your kid. Yeah. Hey, Frankie. Hmm? Hey, let me look at that baby. Yeah, go on. Oh. <laughs> hey, she's a honey, ain't she? Huh? <laughs> she's probably talking about my curly hair, right? <laughs> you know something? Hmm? Look how cute she is. She just keeps smiling all the time. Yeah. Hey, she reminds me of Phyllis when she was that age. <laughs> she is pretty. Yeah. You know, Curly, I used to look just like her when I was a baby. <laughs> now, you see, you've hurt her feelings. Now, why didn't you let well enough alone? Now, we got to do something to entertain her. Quiet, baby, will you please, honey? Now, just be quiet a minute. Oh, let me see. What do you do to make a sponsor's baby happy? Read her a commercial. <laughs> hey, look, Remy, I got a better idea. Hey, listen to this idea. I'll take off her booties and tickle her orange and blue toes. Now, maybe you better tell her a bedtime story. Oh, a bedtime story? Hey, baby, now, wait a minute, baby, baby. Now, quiet a minute, honey. I got a story that you're gonna like. Gee, this is a good one. Once upon a time, in a land called Rexall, there lived 10,000 independent druggists. Now, they were all happily married, and each one had 2,000 of the cutest little drug products that you ever saw. <laughs> Hey, Frankie. Hey, she likes it. Hey, she... Hey, Frankie. Remley, wake up! <laughs> from Rexall. Oh, now, look, you got her started again. Hey, Remley, she shouldn't be crying like this. There must be something wrong with well, her, baby. She... Holy smoke, what time is it, Curly? 8.30, why? Oh, I'm supposed to feed her at 8. Mrs. Scott left her formula in the refrigerator. Well, for goodness sakes, let's get it. I'll carry the baby. Baby, come on now, now, come on. <laughs> Upsy-daisy. That's it, because Mommy did a bitty baby and she's gone for a little trip into the kitchen to get your teeny-weensy bottle. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. How sickening can a man get? <laughs> I get the bottle out of the refrigerator. Oh, this must be it. Mrs. Scott said she just made one bottle. Now, look what you've done, Remley. Oh. Now, we only had one bottle and you had to drop it. What are we going to do now? How are we going to feed the baby? Put her on the floor. Maybe she'll lap it up. <laughs> Frankie, will you listen to me? This is no joke. It's important for a baby to have its formula. Well, you had babies. Mix up another batch for the kids. I never made the stuff. I don't know what goes in it. Alice always made it. In the... Hey, that's it, Alice. Hmm? Hey, I'll call her and she'll tell us how to make the formula. I'll be right back. <laughs> Well, I'd rather not tell you how to make the formula over the phone. It's complicated, and you might get it wrong. 
I'll write down the ingredients and how to mix them and send it over to you. No. No, no, Julius is here delivering an order. He'll bring it over. Goodbye. Oh, that's Bill. He gets into the darndest scrapes. What's all Southern fried up to today? <laughs> Look, I want you to do me a favor. Now, look, if you'll take these directions over to Mr. Harris at this address, it's very important I don't lose it, huh? No, I don't worry. I'll put it right here in my pocket. Oh, that reminds me. I got something else in my pocket. My mother said I should give you this recipe for a bread stuffing for your Christmas turkey. Oh, thanks, Julius. But Mr. Harris prefers <laughs> oyster stuffing. Now, look, Julius, it's important that Mr. Harris gets these directions as soon as possible. Fear not, fair lady. For you, I shall see that this message gets through. I'll swim the deepest river. I'll climb the highest mountain. I'll go through fire and storm. But, Julius, you only have to go to Beverly Hill. <laughs> I know, but for you, I'm going the hard way. Hey, Curly, it's after nine. This kid is starved. What's taking Julius so all long? All right, all right. He'll be here soon. In the meantime, we better do something to take our mind off food. Look, Remley, we got to amuse her. Hey, I got it. What? Let's get down on our hands and knees and make believe we're a couple of horses. That'll do it. Horse, I got to be yet. <laughs> All right, I'll get down on my hands Come on, hands get down on knees. your hands. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, she likes it. Mm. Hey, look, baby. We're horses. <laughs> <laughs> Knock off, Julius. We're just pretending we're horses. We're trying to amuse the baby. Oh, uh, well, you continue, and I'll sing the donkey serenade. <laughs> What's that for? I might as well. You're acting like a couple of jackasses. <laughs> Don't be so funny. Now, have you got those directions Mrs. Harris gave you? Yeah, yeah, I got them right here in my pocket. Let, let's see. Will Stop you... stalling, will you? Give them to me. Take it easy. Here you are. Well, thanks. Now, run along. I got to prepare this formula. I got a baby to feed. The baby's mother's going to let you feed it? Yeah. What's the matter? Has the old lady got a grudge against the kid? <laughs> Will you beat it? Now get out of here. Get going. Someday I'm going to take that Never kid. mind that kid. Let's get the baby's formula made. Give me the paper with Alice's instructions. I'll read it to you while you mix the stuff together. Okay. Wait a minute. What does it say we need first? Let me see. First, get a large bowl. Got it. <laughs> now what? Put two loaves of stale white bread in it. <laughs> stale bread? That don't sound right to me. Me neither. <laughs> this kid's a rich baby. Let's use fresh bread. <laughs> that sounds better. Uh-oh. Uh, ain't got no white bread. Mm. You got any pumpernickel? <laughs> no. All they got is bagels. <laughs> Put a few of those in. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got them in. What else does Alice say? Uh... Add one tablespoon of garlic salt, one tablespoon of red pepper, <laughs> and a half a cup of fat drippings. <laughs> fat drippings? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that? Curly, don't you know anything? <laughs> That's the stuff you get. It comes in small... It's kind of like... Use ketchup. I don't know, Frankie. It, 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 it seems like my kids used to get the uh, uh, pablum. No, these are modern methods, scientific guys. <laughs> well, Alice ought to know what she's doing. Okay, let's go ahead. What else she say we need? Uh, some poultry seasoning, parsley, and an onion. <laughs> an onion? Oh, chopped fine. Oh. <laughs> Not fine. Yeah. That must be to make her strong. <laughs> okay, what's next? Let me see. Uh, in a separate pan, heat your heart, liver, and gizzard. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'll... Wait a minute. Who's heart, liver, and gizzard? Ah, uh, don't say. <laughs> Let's be on the safe side and skip that, huh? Mix up what you got there. Oh, Curly, mix it faster than that. I can't. The bagels are slowing me down. <laughs> Hey, Remley, this stuff don't look right. Don't right. look like that stuff Mrs. Scott had in that bottle. That was liquid. This mess is thick and gooey. Yeah, it is. I wonder if Alice forgot to mark down to... Oh. <laughs> uh, it's my fault. <laughs> I skipped one of the ingredients. Yeah? It says add one cup of red wine. <laughs> Wine for a baby? It must be for the holiday season. <laughs> Go on, add it. Okay, I'll mix it in. Yeah, that thinned it up a little. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Good color. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Remley. Somehow this stuff still doesn't look like... It just don't look right to no, me. No, don't Remley. be silly. If Alice says we should give it to the baby, it must be all right. Just put it in a bottle and give it to... Hello there. Oh, it's Mr. Scott. Oh, back so soon, huh? My wife sent me home to check up. She was worried about the baby and wanted... Oh, Mr. Harris, what are you doing here? Oh, oh hello, Miss Scott. I just dropped in to see if everything was going according to schedule. Everything was okay. Oh, that's very nice of you, Harris. Oh, uh, Sonny, I hope you fed the baby on time. And... Oh. So you mixed a little something in this bowl for yourself. What is it? Boiled tripe? <laughs> no. See, Mr. Scott, the baby dropped a bottle, and this is a new batch of formula we mixed up. This is a formula? Yeah. Alice told us how to make it. Do you mind if I taste it before you give it to the baby? No, go ahead. You'll find it very delicious. You'll soon see. Let's take a spoonful. <laughs> hey, Remy. Yeah? Hey, Remy, look at this rope coming out of his ears. Hey, yeah. Hey, his hat flew up to the ceiling. Hey, Mr. Scott, <coughs> here we are. Over here, Mr. Scott. <laughs> here are. No, hey. Uh, this side. That's, that's the bowl. It. No, right here. There we go. Right. Yeah. That's how's, it. It, how's it taste, Mr. Scott? <laughs> oh. Oh, and you wanted to give this molten lava to my baby. <laughs> Get out of here, both of you. But, Mr. Scott. Get out! An excitable sort, ain't he? <laughs> 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 Can't hardly blame him for getting kind of excited, okay? Well, you know. That formula we made for that baby sure must have been powerful and stuff. Did you see the way it lifted his lid? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, I can't understand it. It's Alice's formula. It must be the same stuff she gave your kids. Certainly it's the same. My kids? Frankie, come on, let's get home fast. Wait till I get a hold of that out. What's the matter? That's where all my wine's been going. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, listen to an interesting conversation. You've dragged me three blocks out of our way to get to this drugstore, Helen. Now tell me why. Because this is a Rexall drugstore, the only place where you can get Rexall drug products. Is that what that orange and blue Rexall sign in the window means? Exactly. I don't get it. Walking three blocks out of the oh, way... Oh, Mr. Druggist. Yes, ma'am? Will you explain to my friend here why so many people prefer Rexall drug products? Well, seeing you two standing there in your winter coats reminds me of one reason. Do you know that Rexall drug products are tested to fit various climates? What on earth do you mean? Rexall scientists create artificial weather that matches the various climates where Rexall drug products are sold. And then, for anywhere from a few months to a year, they test both the products and the packages to see if they are affected in any way. Yes, that's just one of the careful scientific tests, all of the 2,000 or more drug products. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> <laughs> 